Hello Stampers and welcome to another 3D paper craft video. This is Liz Holloway from Liz Holloway Design and in this video I'm going to show you how to assemble this ice cream parlor. A few weeks ago I received this brand new set called Sprinkles of Life from the new 2015-2016 catalog and I'm using the Cherry on Top Designer Series paper. This is a beautiful set of papers and I'm loving it. So let's get started. What I have already done was I pre-cut all my materials out and also have punched 16 word windows out of the Whisper White cardstock and 16 word windows out of the Cherry on Top Designer Series paper. I'm using the Bermuda Bay polka dot and on the other side is the ice cream cupcakes. First, what we're going to do is we're going to work on the awning and I have already creased all the fold lines and as you can see, I aligned the bottom to the grid paper so that when I place the word window pieces, I know that I've got this straight. I'm adding multi-purpose glue on the main panel and start it at the bottom end, aligning the whisper white piece about half inch off the awning panel, which is two squares to the right, and that is my half inch. I am using glue because it will give me some wiggle room to move the pieces around in case that the strips are not straight. As well, the glue will clear, dry clear once, the, once it's finished. Continue to alternate the pieces until you get to the end and then make sure that you check your work. Now what I have done was once the awning is dry and ready, I'm ready to proceed to the next step so I'm turning the project over, the awning over, and I flip the tabs down and then this will give me the guidelines to trim the excess off on the corners. So the next step is to create your opening so that the rounded awning fits inside. The awning measures 7 inches and I'm taking my ruler and pencil and then marking the center point at 3.5 inches. Bringing, bringing in your Big Shot and the number four circle framelits. Align it at center point and about half inch from the peak to the bottom of the awning panel. This will give you the curve opening of the secondary awning. To crease the awning, I then took my bone folder and followed the main panel line. This will give me a nice clean score line and then I went ahead and folded the window pieces down. To attach the side awning, add glue to both tabs and align the side awnings up to the fold lines. The straight edge should line up with the fold lines and be careful that you have the right side. There is a left and a right side. When you get your sides attached, then go ahead and align the straight edge to the grid paper and then starting at the connecting point, continue on the window punch pieces and again alternating the Whisper White and the Bermuda Bay pieces. To trim the excess off, go ahead and bend your side panels and then trim, follow the line and trim. So now we want to work on the semicircle uh, awning and what you're going to do is bring in the rectangle pieces and that's got the tabs on both sides that looks like teeth and then you have a semicircle with the point on the one end. Now this point is a placement indicator for the rectangle piece. So what I've done was I bend this tab and added glue 
and then position the tab in that opening and holding the tab to ensure that it's dry. Once you got that in place, glue the outer edges and then secure the remaining tabs on the outside. You can use double-sided tape if you wish, but you want to make sure that the edges and the fold lines are connected and snug, butted up to it. And then when you are adding the semicircle panel on the other side, check to see if it is the right side before gluing your pieces on. And then again, aligning the fold to the edge. Next, I'm using the number four framelits and then cutting a coordinating piece for the front to cover the semi-round awning and glue it, it in front and trimming the excess off. I then cut a piece of designer paper strip at one and five eighths by four and I'm using double-sided tape because I don't want the designer to fall off. When I was building this I didn't take into consideration that I should have used the same color cardstock as my designer paper to prevent the white from showing through. I thought about starting that part over by recutting and reassembling over again, but I decided to leave it to show you that as a designer, I too make mistakes. To cover the white part showing, all I did was I, take, I took the Bermuda Bay marker and colored in the white cardstock. So once all the awning pieces are done, set aside and we're going to start working on building the parlor. Bring your two side pieces and the back panel piece and then start assembling the parlor. To start off, glue the side pieces to the back and as you can see, I placed my tabs on the outside of the back panel. Don't worry about the tabs showing. Uh, this is because we're going to have another decorative panel covering it and um, and it will hide the, the tabs and then this will ensure that the recipient receives this and your project is not going to fall apart and that your 3D project is sturdy. To get the project lined up, carefully align the straight edge to the fold line and snug it up against the fold line. When you are done attaching your side, then go ahead and attach the front panel and again tabs on the outside. So now that you have your box done, glue the bottom panel down and ensure that it is secured into place before moving to the recessed door panel. Once it's down, next bring in your recessed doorway and the piece looks like this. Starting at the tab on the right side, valley fold, then mountain fold the next score line, valley fold the next score line, and mountain fold the next score line. When you have all the folds in place, Flip your bottom tabs up and the top tabs mountain fold them down. Check your work before gluing the pieces down. The next step is to recess the doorway into the building and attaching the tabs on the outside of the front panel. Glue th let the glue dry before moving on. Or again, you can use your double sided tape. Now, I have went ahead and prepared my acetate window and I adding window panes using a fine black sharpie marker and then attaching the window down. The video does not show the curtains but if you want to add the curtains this is the time to add them now because at the end of the video it shows that I added the curtains later on and it's harder to add them at the end than it is now. For my curtains, I used a beautiful watermelon wonder dotted lace, which is also brand new in the 2015-2016 catalog, and I cut it at one and a half inch wide and taped it across the window. You can see that the parlor is now coming together. Now to hide the tabs, 
the front, the sides, and the back pieces. I have pre-embossed all the pieces with our brick embossing folder and then gluing the sides and the front pieces down. Don't glue the back piece yet because we still have to the top to finish. For the top, attach one outer tab to the back of the parlor. Then secure the decorative back piece on the, once this is in place bring your awning in and attach the awning tabs inside the box. So the next step is to add glue to the back of the uh, semi-rounded uh, awning and then uh, secure it tightly through the uh, semicircle opening. And then any finishing touches you want to make. Here I added Bermuda Bay window trims including the doorway and the doors are embossed with the wood grain embossing folder and then I sponged with the Bermuda Bay ink. I added the new 2015 to 2017 in color blossom accents for the flowers and it looks like I've got flower boxes on in front of the windows. The signage is a computer generated which is also attached to the downloaded files and I trimmed it out so that I don't have any of the white outlines leaving the bottom tabs exposed because this is where you're going to attach the signage to the front of the tab. Then I embossed the signage with wood grain embossing folder and then I went and I wanted to look like a western stylish sign so I sponged the sign with the soft suede classic ink. I used the sprinkles of life to create the ice cream on top and add a crystal effect on the cherry. The ice cream cone acts like a lever to open the top and inside you can add a gift card and coordinating cards. Here I have three cards using the Sprinkles of Life stamp set. One is a shaker card and two others are just clean and easy cards. So I hope you have enjoyed watching this on How It's Made tutorial on the ice cream parlor using the Sprinkles of Life stamp set. If you want a copy of your own pattern, I have linked the information below of the YouTube and um, I look forward to seeing your creation. For the products that I have talked, you can find them below on my YouTube descriptions or you can go to my blog at thispulawaydesign.blogspot.ca and I appreciate you stopping by and I hope that I have inspired you. Bye for now.